I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're going to do something kind of problematic for a lot of people here on YouTube looking for prepping videos. We're actually going to talk about a solution to a problem. We're not just going to talk about how terrible the world is and how you should uh, you should be prepping and you got to be doing all this stuff. We're going to dive into actually how to do something, and that is working on an air vent for our fallout shelter, which is right beneath us. Uh, we have pretty much everything set in our fallout shelter and within a week, maybe two weeks, we're going to be doing a full dry run of the shelter. We're, we're actually going to be sealing ourselves in there and we're going to do a live stream so you guys can join us, ask any kind of questions that you might have about the fallout shelter. Uh, you know, you can come up with scenarios and we can try them out uh, so that, uh, you know, we can try out all different types of potential issues that we might need to face. Uh, it's always great to do dry runs of everything because you never know what might uh, come up in a dry run itself doesn't guarantee that you're not gonna have any problems but it can solve a lot of problems ahead of time and one problem that we're trying to solve ahead of even doing the dry run is air ventilation now we do have forced air going into the shelter and the forced air is being drawn in through filters you know we're not just bringing outside air into the shelter it's being drawn in through filters and it, it had always been my uh, my sense that there are enough little leaks here and there in the fallout shelter that you're just going to create positive pressure inside and the exhaust air because you can't just keep putting air in it the stale air has to go somewhere the exhaust air would just kind of find its way out through all the little nooks and crannies put pro positive pressure on them and that would prevent things from leaking in uh, but it has been uh, suggested to me that I probably should have a dedicated way of the air coming out uh, specifically from die bullfrog and because of him I have created the die bullfrog commemorative outgoing air vent. Uh, it is going to be replacing this light tube top right here. I have multiple light tubes that go down into the shelter. They go down and then do a 90 degree bend and uh, go to the side. The reason that they don't go straight in is because radiation would just go straight down and bake us from above. Uh, so uh, we're going to be using this as one of our air vents. And I'll just kind of show you what I've got here. It's a piece of four inch. I'll come uh, bring it a little closer. It's a piece of four inch um, ABS pipe and I drilled holes all around uh, the periphery. They didn't have to be all lined up nice and neat, but I did try to uh, you know, make them as nice and neat as I possibly could. Each one of these I think is like an inch and one quarter in diameter. Uh, on the inside of this, I put some uh, bug netting, uh, you know, like screen that you might have on your house. On the outside, I've got this coarser netting, and this is the type of thing, well, it's not coarser netting, it's coarser mesh, metal mesh. Um, the idea is we don't want bugs getting in, but we also don't want mice and things going in. Mice can just uh, chew right through screening, uh, but this stuff here uh, is is a harder metal, and this will keep uh, you know larger rodents out, and then the inner screen will keep bugs out. So, like I said, it's a uh, a piece of four inch ABS. Uh, I glued the inner screen on. I used these uh, zip ties to hold the outer screen on. I put a four inch ABS cap glued to the top, and I've got this um, coupler here uh, uh, for uh, you know four inch ABS. I, I glued it into place, got a really nice seal here because it's going to be vertical. This is where any water would, would kind of pool there. And on the bottom, what we've got are these, uh, these flaps. This is a, uh, a one-way, uh, what do you call it? Kind of like a check valve, but for air. I've used these uh, down inside of the shelter for making some bellows. And I've got this one right here so the air will come up and air can go in, but it's not going to uh, you know, be back flowing in. It was actually uh, really nice. I was able to find... Uh, one of these uh, uh, vent pieces that was 100 millimeters wide and 100 millimeters is pretty much the exact diameter of the inside, the inside diameter of this, uh, this ABS pipe. In fact, it was, the ABS pipe was either a little bit over 100 millimeters or this thing here was a little under. It fit in absolutely perfectly and I just kind of uh, caulked the, the seam with some silicone glue there and then stuck all this on. And this is just going to go right on the top over here. Now if we leave this out exposed to the elements, rain is going to come in. So we're going to talk about what I'm doing to address that. But first let's uh, let's take off this thing. It's got some condensation on the top here. This is just one of these uh, those couplings I mentioned with a uh, an ashtray or something. Uh, silicone to the top of it. It's like a, a tough glass uh, on the top and I just put silicone glue to, uh, to glue it on there and these have been on there a while. I guess I'll just put this into storage, uh, you know, somewhere down in the uh, shelter below. 
and we're replacing it. Had, like I said, had that condensation there. We're going to replace it with this. Now I don't need to glue this on, uh, you know, because water is not going to go up. Water, you know, uh, sheds down. So I'm, I can just take this and slide it right down on there. That feels pretty good. And the way that we're going to deal with the top, which I just got a little bit wet, which I don't want it to be wet. The way we're going to deal with the top so that we don't have rain coming in here is I've got this old paint can. Uh, this paint can is made out of number five polypropylene. Uh, this is uh, ABS plastic. I don't know that I can use ABS cement to glue polypropylene, uh, polypropylene uh, man, they make these easier to say, uh, to the top of it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to, it's going to be put there and it's going to be glued in place and I'm just going to use some silicone glue. I don't know whether this is going to make the best seal in the world, but it really doesn't have to be the best seal in the world. It just has to be enough to kind of roughly keep it in place. In fact, I could probably just leave that there and that would be fine. I mean, is the wind really going to be able to blow that up and off there? And it doesn't have to be centered or anything. So I'm mostly just going to be gluing it on so it you know, kind of looks a little bit nicer. Uh, what I like about this is the whole thing's black. It's, it's not very eye-catching. You know, if people came by, the, you know, I guess if they saw that, they might be like, oh, what the hell is that? But, you know, having this on top, it makes it just really, I mean, it doesn't jump out to your eye. Uh, and that's good. We want to have the whole thing just be nice and chill. Nice and chill. So uh, pop this off and I'm going to put a bit of silicone on the top. I found one of the best ways of resealing your silicone uh, glue tubes is a little piece of uh, mylar, uh, like uh, snack packaging. This is an, uh, a cliff uh, granola bar wrapper, you know, it's a, like the silvery mylar. I just wrap it around there and then take a rubber band and wrap it around. And the mylar really prevents any uh, moisture from going in and out. We've got a little bit of a, a dried plug there uh, that I'll just uh, put off to the side here. I'm just going to put a, a ring of the silicone on there and that'll be that. I'll put the top on. So like I said, we are going to be doing a live stream and the live stream is going to be, uh, you know, for the purpose of just kind of testing the whole thing out, we're going to try to stay in there, I think, for at least 24 hours, and we're going to test out all the systems. We're going to test up, out the backup systems, uh, you know, because we've got uh, backup systems. If a, a primary system goes down, we want to have the backup system ready to go. We've got backup electrical systems, backup water systems, and everything. We're going to try to uh, test all that out. And if you want to join us for that, and I will be announcing when that's coming up on our channel, if you want to join us for that, you can... Uh, just keep a, uh, an eye out for the, uh, the announcement on the channel. And I would love to hear any of your thoughts in regard to, uh, you know, things that we should try out. Uh, we're going to do dry runs of, uh, having to leave the shelter. We have a gear for, you know, leaving the shelter if we need to. Obviously you don't want to do that if you can avoid it, but if we had to leave for some reason, if I have to go out and I have to do something, uh, you know, I have, uh, you know, gear to put on. We're going to test all that kind of stuff out. We're going to test kind of decontamination procedures as we come, kind of come back in. We're going to go through the whole thing and I, I hope that it will be a, uh, an educational experience for myself and for you guys as well. Right. It feels like that's pretty good and I'm just kind of feeling around the edge making sure that the, uh, the gap is kind of uniform everywhere. That's purely aesthetic. That's not really important whether it, it is or it isn't. Um, now, in terms of whether this uh, silicone really is going to bond these two together, like I said, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, you know, this thing isn't really going to get uh, you know, blown around or anything, so I'm not really that concerned. But I think it's going to uh, be a good enough seal that it will uh, it'll hold it on there. So thank you, Die Bullfrog, for your continued um, push, <laughs> suggesting that I should build this thing. I feel better having this thing on here. Uh, in, and that brings me to the last thing I want to talk about, which is, uh, you know, the back and forth here on this channel. A lot of people will approach me and they'll talk about, uh, you know, me hosting this channel and they'll refer to me as an influencer. Uh, that's like a hot term here in, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, YouTube, uh, you know, channel hosts and things like that. And uh, yeah, I know, I, I know that I influence a lot of you guys, but it goes the other way too. A lot of things that you guys say, you know, influences me as well. And um, I think that it's really important to kind of keep that in mind. And that is one of the that is one of the most important things that we have here on these videos is the comments below. Uh, you know, this is not a one-way street or it shouldn't be a one-way street. You know, whenever you have an idea based on anything that I present in one of my videos, I know that I would love to hear it. I always think about everything that people say, even some of the stuff that's kind of dumbass sounding and isn't really all that well thought out. I still kind of have it rattle around in my head and be like, you know, I wonder if there is anything to that. Oftentimes there's not, but 
I definitely listen to you guys, and I know other people in the comments will oftentimes listen as well. So whenever you have some thought about something that's happening on this channel, don't think that you're just shouting out into the dark. I know I always read all of your comments, and I, I think about them. Even if I don't like jump on board right away, they, they bounce around in my brain, and you know, for a lot of other people that read the comments, I know it's probably a very similar situation. And that's one of the best things that we have here about this, um, you know, in regard to this uh, platform that we have, is that we're able to subtly influence each other and hopefully make all of our situations better in a crisis or during no normal times as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Die Bullfrog, for pushing me to create this thing. I feel really great that this is uh, here. And I will be announcing when we're going to be doing the full run-through. Like It's going to be like 24 hours, 36 hours, something like that long. We're going to be doing it as a live stream, like I said, and I'll announce when we're going to be doing that whenever we figure out that we're able to do that. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.